From going to a Halloween party in August to bringing my own straws, I've got a bunch of things that I'm gonna do that may be a little bit weird and quirky to you guys on my next Disney World trip, but I promise there's tips behind all of them. Let's get started. Hey everybody, it's AJ from Disney Food Blog, and I am going to talk to you about a few weird things that I'm gonna do on my upcoming Disney trips that may help you a little bit with your planning. The first one is going to a Halloween party in August. Now, sounds weird, right? Why would there be Halloween parties in August? But Disney likes to start celebrating early and they, of course, do do their Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party in August. They start their dates in August. So it runs from August right through up to early November for that Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party. Now, why would we go in August and not later in the year? Well, going earlier in the season means that you can get a cheaper ticket. So prices start at $79 for an adult and go up to $135 on Halloween night. So you actually get a cheaper ticket and a cheaper opportunity to go to the same exact party if you go earlier in the year. So the event gets you access to the Magic Kingdom after it closes and there's lower crowds, free candy with trick-or-treating, special entertainment like the Boo To You Parade, which we love, and a brand new fireworks show that's debuting at this year's party. Next thing I'm gonna do that's a little odd is not going into a park. It seems really anticlimactic to go to Disney World but not go to a park, and we're not suggesting that you never go into a park. But maybe take a day to spend at your resort or even check out some of the dining options at another resort. There are tons of activities you can take part in in the resort, like animation classes at Art of Animation, painting classes at Boardwalk Inn, and free restaurant tours at Animal Kingdom Lodge. And some of our favorite restaurants are located at Disney World's resorts. Now remember, you can go to the resorts even if you're not staying there. Disney welcomes you, they want you to come to the resort so that you can check them out and maybe stay there next time. But we would recommend taking a bus to the resorts or a minivan because sometimes the resorts don't let you park if you're not actually staying there or have a dining reservation there. Also, you can spend a day exploring Disney Springs and not going into a park. There's lots and lots of restaurants there, tons of really, really great shopping. So there's lots to keep you occupied in Disney Springs. So if you don't go into a park one of the days of your trip, a lot of people choose to do this on their arrival day or their departure day. That saves you the cost of a park ticket. The next thing I'm gonna do on my next trip that might seem a little weird to a lot of folks is skipping the fireworks. Now, this tip is great if you've already seen the fireworks show or if you just don't care for them. And most people will be watching fireworks, which means if you do not, those lines for the rides are gonna be super short, even at major attractions like Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and Slinky Dog Dash, unless you're, of course, there during a super busy time. And don't forget, you can get in line for all of the rides until right up at park close. So you can absolutely ride those rides with a little bit shorter line even if you ride after the fireworks but if you do skip those nighttime spectaculars you're gonna find shorter lines for the rides Number four in my weird stuff I'm gonna do on my next Disney trip is bringing my own straws. And in truth, I bring my own straws on most of my Disney trips now. So straw apocalypse has come to the parks, and while you can use the paper straws that Disney has, it's probably a better idea to bring your own. That saves on waste, and also those paper straws can get kind of soggy. I don't know if you guys have had experience with those. So we always recommend heading over to Amazon, go to your local big box store, and get a bunch of either silicon or stainless steel reusable straws to bring with you. They usually come with a little carrying bag and even a little pipe cleaner to sort of clean them out when you are back in your hotel room. Next thing I'm gonna do when I am in Disney World that might be a little weird is walk to a faraway bathroom. Now, not all bathrooms at Disney World are created equal. And we will be honest, we do have our favorites here on the DFB team. We actually did a whole video about the least crowded bathrooms in Disney World and a whole video about the most themed and most interesting bathrooms in Disney World. Many of Disney World's bathrooms are super crowded because they're right there in the middle of a main thoroughfare. So we will definitely walk to the cleaner, less crowded bathroom when we are in Walt Disney World, we do it every single time. So some of our favorites, the restrooms in the America Pavilion, which are over to the right if you're looking at the American Adventure. These are huge, they're never crowded, and they're always clean. Also, the restrooms near Pirates of the Caribbean and Journey into Imagination never seem to get too busy. So do check those out. And don't forget to watch our video all about the least crowded bathrooms in Disney World. I promise it will help you. 
Next thing we're gonna do that's a little odd is take a break on a ride. Now, the People Mover in Tomorrowland and Magic Kingdom is often overlooked for more popular rides like Mine Train or Dumbo, Space Mountain, Big Thunder Mountain, you get it. But the People Mover has constant loading, which means it goes really quickly and it loads really quickly. And this is also a super relaxing ride. It's just like a little train ride, but it's long enough that you get to take a load off, you get to take a breather, relax, get into a little bit of that air conditioning it's really, really nice. Those of us who are long-term Disney fans love it, um, and we are riding it most of the time. So another great break ride is the Liberty Square Riverboat. There's not too many seats, so be sure to make a beeline for one if you want to rest during the 22-minute ride around Magic Kingdom. There's plenty of other great relaxing rides that you can take a break on around the parks. Next thing I'm gonna do that's a little weird is hanging out in World Showcase before it's open. So World Showcase in Epcot officially opens at 11 a.m., but you can enter Mexico and Norway to the left and Canada, United Kingdom, and France to the right at 9 a.m. when the rest of the park opens. So the Norway Pavilion will likely be super crowded with everyone headed to Frozen Ever After, but if you go to the right, you can enjoy a completely empty and quiet United Kingdom. And the gardens here are a solitude spot pretty much any time of the day, but the morning here is really, really peaceful. You can get some great photographs here as well. So you can also head back to the France Pavilion for one of our favorite quick breakfast stops at Layal. They have some of the best Disney Dining Plan snack credit items, and they have mimosas. So that's a great way to start your day in Epcot. And the next sort of odd thing I'm gonna do on my next Disney trip is not make dinner reservations every night. Now, you know, we talk a lot about making sure that you're planned ahead. You make those reservations 180 days in advance just in case you really, really wanna go to a particular restaurant. And that is good advice, but sometimes it's nice to leave a few evenings open so you can spend some extra time at a park, spend some time in the pool, maybe order room service, or visit one of the Disney World lounges that are often connected to great restaurants. Um, um, and don't have quite as much of a time constraint around them as it would if you had a dining reservation. Also, it's totally okay to do counter service for dinner. Sit down dinners take a lot of time out of your day. So if you're looking to keep moving, grabbing a quick meal from a counter service location is a great bet. So consider not making dinner reservations for every single night and instead playing it by ear and seeing what happens. Next thing that's a little odd that I might do on my next Disney trip is to watch the fireworks from outside the park. Now, you probably already know you can see the Magic Kingdom fireworks from California Grill at the top of the Contemporary Resort, and you might even know that you can eat earlier in the evening and come back just to watch those fireworks with your receipt from the California Grill or from the California Grill Lounge. But if you can't get a reservation there or it's just not your style, one of the best spots to watch the Magic Kingdom fireworks is in the beach at the Polynesian Resort. Now, they typically pipe in the music and you can enjoy a Dole Whip or a Lapu Lapu or even one of those great lime margaritas that we talked about in our most recent uh, snacks video while you watch. And the bonus is you get to see the electrical water pageant, which has been running since the Magic Kingdom opened, and that happens right after the fireworks are done. You can also see some fireworks a little bit over in Epcot from the boardwalk. So right around the Yacht and Beach Club resorts and the boardwalk resort, you'll be able to see the tops of those Illuminations fireworks. Next thing I will for sure be doing in Disney World, because um, I do this every trip, is riding alone. You guys know I often go to Disney World alone and solo, either because my kid is in school, my family's not able to get away, and I just head down for a couple of days to handle up on some meetings or a media event or something else that I need to do. But I always make time to ride rides because I love riding the rides in Disney World. So if you're looking for a way to drastically cut down your wait times, take advantage of those single rider lines. Now they aren't at every single ride, but a couple of them do have them and they're super awesome. You won't necessarily get to ride with your group if you're using the single rider lines, but you'll all get to ride and have more time for rides if you decide to use that single rider line. So we've seen the test track standby lines at over an hour with the single rider line somewhere around 10 to 20 minutes, so it really can save you a lot of time. Single Rider is also available on Rock and Roller Coaster and Expedition Everest. And the last weirdo thing that I'm gonna do on my next Disney trip is special order my meal. Those of you who know me know that I'm very high maintenance when it comes to what I eat. And Disney World is super accommodating when it comes to special diets and special requests. So if you hate cilantro like I do, ask for your dish to come without cilantro. If there's a particular item listed on the menu with the entree that you want to order, ask for it without it. They can absolutely do that for you. And if they can't, they'll let you know. Now, remember if you're visiting with a special diet or with an allergy, most table service 
restaurants have an allergy-friendly menu that will list which items are free from the top seven allergens as well as which items are vegetarian and vegan. So when you make your reservation, you can note any allergies there are in your party and the allergy will be marked on your reservation ticket so the server knows right away. If you forget to mark it ahead of time, no worries, just let your server know when you sit down. And if it's something simple, the allergy-friendly menu or your server should be able to help. But if you have more questions, the chef is always happy to come out and help you out, particularly at buffets where a chef will come out and walk you along the buffet and point out which items are okay for your diet or your allergy. And of course, if you're just high maintenance like me, you can always ask for special requests. They'll accommodate as much as they can, depending on what's in the kitchen. So there are a few sort of weird, odd things that I will definitely do on my next trip to Disney World because even though they may not be very common, even though they're not something that you've done before at Disney World, it actually can help you have a better trip. So I hope these tips have been helpful for you guys. Please let us know in the comments your special weird tips that you love to share with people going to Disney World. It really helps the rest of our viewers to see your experiences. Please give us a like. We'd love to see a thumbs up on this video from you and please subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you part of the DFB Guide family. Thanks for listening, you guys. Thanks for watching. This is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.